morning. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to you all to Newton Wallace Town's church service. And a very warm welcome to those who are tuning in via face, Facebook or YouTube. Are there any visitors with us this morning? Put your hands up if you have any visitors. So, no, no visitors with us this morning. Anyway, friends, we trust and pray that you're all well. And Rona will return from holiday this Tuesday. And if any urgent pastoral care required before then, then please contact myself. And just a couple of uh, intimations this week. As intimated last week by Pauline, this Thursday the Guild will have their dedication service here in the church at half past one, and all are welcome. And with some sad news to report this morning, Mrs. Rena Bell sadly passed away in Air Hospital on Wednesday the 29th of September. And she'd been in failing health for some time. And we remember her only daughter Sandra at, at this time. And funeral arrangements are, aren't yet known. Friends, our call to worship this morning is taken from Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 10. Revere. There's a beautiful word. Revere. Revere the Lord your God. Serve him. Cling to him and swear by his name alone. He is your praise, and he is your God, the one who performed these great and awesome acts that you witnessed with your very own eyes. Your ancestors went down to Egypt with a total of 70 people. But now look, the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the nighttime sky. Amen. Friends, let's open our service by singing our first song, number 982, Far and Near. beautiful song to open our service this morning. And now, boys and girls, Lisa's going to have a few words with you. Thank you. Hey. Hi, everyone. Um, so the mor this morning, I'm going to talk to you about faith. Um, so look into the Bible to see what faith actually means. 
So this is taken from Hebrews 11, chapter, uh, verse 1, and it's the International Children's Bible version. So it says, faith means being sure of things that we hope for, and faith means knowing that something is real, even when we do not see it. So we put faith in lots of different things, like right now you're all putting faith in your seats to hold you up, but we can see the pews are pretty strong. They're not going to collapse under your way, are they? We put faith in these balconies, but we can see the pillars are strong and they're holding us up, so we can see why we trust in them. But often people say things like, oh, seeing is believing, and I won't believe that until I see it. But we do have things that we place faith in every day that we can see. So there's gravity, so like the older boys and girls will learn about gravity and physics, and that's where you learn that there's this force called gravity that pulls everything to the earth. So you all know that if I drop this pen right now, it's not going to go flying into there, is it? It's just going to drop down, isn't it? Because that's gravity. We also place faith. We know about the wind, don't we? So we see the effects of the wind every day. You can see it blowing the trees. Obviously abroad, you see like hurricanes and things, very dramatic effects of the wind. We can also feel the wind in our faces, don't we? Especially if you're down the beach on a really windy day and feel it blowing on your face. And you can hear the wind whistling in the wind as well, don't you? So when the Bible talks about faith in God, it means that we have to put all our confidence and our hope in him. Sometimes that can be hard when we can't see God. So how do we trust in God when we can't see him? So we can look in the Bible for examples. So recently, Marlene spoke to you about Noah and the ark during Sunday school. Um, and Noah trusted God enough to build an ark, even though he hadn't seen the rain or the flood coming. Noah didn't let anyone's ridicule or mocking him stop him. He listened to God, and he, not other people, and Noah had faith. So, what about people who you know and can see around you today? I wonder if our church family can help us understand faith. So, I want the congregation, if you could raise your hand, if you've ever saw the effects of God on someone, or indeed yourself, if someone's been changed by your, their faith, some, if you've saw somebody become a happier person, Maybe give more of their time or their money to their faith to help others. Raise your hand if that's happened to you. Yeah, so a lot of people have seen that. What about, like in the way that we feel the wind, has anybody felt God's presence near you, either at times of sorrow or times of happiness? Has anybody felt God's with them at difficult times? Raise your hand. Yeah. And has anyone heard God speaking to you? And I don't mean like a big booming voice from the sky. I mean, it might, it might not even be a voice at all. It might be something that you hear God speaking into your minds or into your heart. Has that ever happened to him in church today? Yep. Okay. So you can see that all around you, you've got people who've got faith in God. Now, you remember, remember a few weeks ago, I showed you a tiny little mustard seed. And Jesus says that faith the size of a mustard seed is all that you need. God knows that we can't start out as a fully grown big two-story mustard tree. But any time... Someone has faith in God and Jesus, they're planting that little tiny mustard seed of faith. And when that happens, when you plant that little tiny seed, it grows up and it creates more mustard seeds, doesn't it? So as Christians, it works the same way. Once someone's been a Christian for a while, they can tell others about it and they can share their faith. So as you start your journey, your faith might only be that size of a mustard seed, but that's all that you need, okay? So now you're going to have the children's song. It's number 49, Be Bold. And after that, you're going to leave for Sunday school. Thank you.
to Sunday school. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today we ask you to help us look outwardly, not just to see what is happening across the world in other countries, but also to see what is happening directly around us. So often we look, but we do not see. We are in our own space, stuck in our own situations, and don't see the person right beside us in the workplace or even at home. Help us to see family, a friend or a neighbour in need, to see the needs of those where we live. There are so many people who are scared, people who are struggling, and we raise them and their needs before you today. Help us never to miss the opportunity to do an act of kindness for others. And we pray for peace, unity and community in our neighbourhoods and for all the people living there. We pray for the lost, the hurting, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, and for those who are imprisoned behind both visible and invisible walls. Send your comfort, your peace, and your calming presence to those who are without hope. Protect the defenceless and hold them close to your heart. Lord, We pray today for the family of Rena Bell, who passed away in her hospital on Wednesday, and especially for her daughter, Sandra. Hold them close at this time. And Father, hear now our own prayers as we name others who are close to our hearts in the silence before you. Father, we think of the many things happening in the world today. Sometimes it gets a bit overwhelming and we want to try and protect ourselves from the effects of what's happening around us. But you have empowered us to stand strong, not only for ourselves, but for those around us as well. We lift before you today all those in positions of authority and leadership, both locally and throughout the world. Give them your mind and surround them with counsellors who will exercise integrity and work for justice, morality and freedom. Help them to esteem you and not dismiss you. So many people, so many needs, but Jesus, you have the power for every need. We praise your name and thank you for all you have done for us and continue to do. Great is the Lord. Amen. And we're going to continue our worship just now by singing Great is the Lord.
beautiful song that is. That's, that's just so powerful, so spiritual, so worshipful. Friends, Jesus and hell are not swear words. And this morning I want to have the reading and the sermon together. You may think that's a bit of an unusual introduction, that Jesus and hell are not swear words. Our reading this morning is probably the most famous verse in the Bible. And you'll see it on the back of buses, you'll see it in billboards, and you've probably learned it at Sunday school. And it's a very common verse, and I just love it. But before we read it, there is a song that I heard a couple of weeks ago, and I was wanting to play it with you as good people this morning. And it's called, For God So Loved the World. For God so loved the world, come on, that he gave his only son, and whosoever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal life. Believe in God. I shall hold to the Lord. I shall hold to God alone. For his love has salvaged me. For his love has set me free. For God. For God. So loved the world and that he gave his only son and whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life Hallelujah Hallelujah I shall
Hope you've enjoyed that beautiful song, beautiful words, just fantastic. And when I was watching it on YouTube, I always enjoy reading the comments underneath. And just to give you a few of the comments from people, when I sang it over and over again, I felt God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, and I felt how He loves me. Thank you, Lord. How beautiful and lovely. No words to express the beauty on this song. Hallelujah, by Jesus' precious blood, I am set free. And I'm saved with you, Jesus. This song is so powerful, it reminds us all of God's amazing love. So deep that we can't even fathom that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, for us to have eternal life. Words are not enough to say thank you for sending your only son for us to have life. Wonderful comments. You've obviously guessed it, friends. It's uh, John 3, 16 this morning's reading. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Friends, let's try and imagine that this is the first time that you've heard this. Try and imagine this is the first time that you've heard this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Friends, notice the two options. Perish or eternal life. Which one of the two would you choose? Phil, which one would you choose? Yeah, man. Elizabeth, both of you, which one would you choose? Yeah, man. Friends, which one would you choose? Shall we just say a short prayer? Father God, we would just ask you to bless your word this morning and bless this text, Lord. And come, Holy Spirit, come and give to us all an understanding and meet with us today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I would like to put three questions to you this morning. And regardless of if you're here every week or you come occasionally or you're watching online, I want to ask you three very important questions. And maybe some of you haven't considered these questions before. But please trust me, the response to these three questions is not just relevant to your life now, but crucially relevant to what is beyond this life and what eternity holds for you. The first question is, friend, do you know for sure that if you were to pass today, you will go to heaven? Do you know for sure if you were to pass today, would you go to heaven? Second question, when you stand before God, and he was to ask you, why would I let you into my heaven? What will you say to him? When you stand before God and he was to ask you, why would I let you into my heaven? What will you say to him? And the third question is, where will you be in a hundred years from now? Where will you be a hundred years from now? 
Some of you may be thinking, Gary, I've got far more pressing issues on my plate than these three religious questions. But if you're thinking that, can I respectfully and kindly say, maybe we should just pause a little bit in life and consider these three questions. So why is that? You can become famous in this life. You can become very rich. You may become highly educated. And you may become very glamorous. And you may become highly successful. But when it's over, you can be totally lost. You can have a lifetime of achievements and yet lose the thing that is most precious. Lose your very own soul and face the wrath of God when you stand before him. That's why I think those three questions are so important. It won't matter what you've achieved, achieved in your life, but how you respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ is the thing, the thing that will matter at the end of the day. Your response to these questions will decide whether you're in heaven for all eternity or whether you're in hell for all eternity. There is no other destination. It's either heaven or hell. There is something that grieves me about our modern society. In fact, friends, there are a lot of things in this modern world that get under my skin. But one thing that does annoy me is the way that people misuse the name of Jesus. Friends, Jesus or Jesus Christ isn't a swear word. But in today's modern world, sadly it is. A lot of people think it's no big deal. That's what they think. It's no big deal to use the Lord's name as a swear word. But this is a serious sin. The Bible says it's a serious sin. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who misuses his name in vain. Friends, the name Jesus or Jesus Christ isn't a swear word. It's the name of God the Father's only begotten Son who died for each one of us. Yet the person who uses this word as a swear word, they don't know what they're doing. You know, I often wonder if using Jesus as a swear word and if people started saying Muhammad or Allah, I wonder what the response would be. People also use the word hell out of context. Friends, the word Jesus, Jesus Christ, or hell, they aren't swear words. Jesus is a real person. The name Jesus was the name given to God's Son. Let that sink in. The name given to God's Son. It's shocking what's happened to the word Jesus. The God of creation, the God who made you, the God who gives us every single breath, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Indeed, the name Jesus means God saves. This is the most unique person ever. In my life, I've met many lovely people, and many of you are in here this morning. But no one can come close to this man, Jesus. Fully man, fully God. All the miracles that he did, walking on water and raising the dead. He proved that he truly was the son of God. He died around the age of 33. 
a man who had never, never sinned. And he died because of my sin and your sin. Our sins were put on him. The guilt and the penalty of those sins he took. That's what happened on the cross. He endured the wrath of God, going through hell so that you and I wouldn't need to suffer God's wrath for our sins. Jesus did die on the cross, but after three days, he rose from the dead, just as he said he would do. And friends, when we're singing in church, and when we sing to God, are we really singing to someone that is dead? When we worship him, whether at home or at our works or in church, are we worshiping someone who is dead? No, we're not, are we? We are singing and worshiping to our Lord who is alive. Amen. Amen. Friends in church, friends watching, Jesus Christ is alive this day. He is unique. There is no one quite like him. The world's religious leaders, how many of them are still alive? Buddha's body was cremated in India. Muhammad, he's buried in Saudi Arabia. Joseph Smith of the Mormon Church, he's buried in the United States. And the Guru Nanak, the founder of the Sikh religion, you can go and visit his grave in the Punjab in Pakistan. You can get your passports out, guys. You can go to a plane. Depends if it's COVID uh, friendly or not. I'm not sure in all these countries, but you can go and visit all these religious leaders. You'll see where they're laid to rest. What about Jesus? Where would you go and visit where he was laid to rest? You can't. Because, friends, he isn't dead. He is alive. He is unique. There's no one quite like him. Jesus isn't a swear word. It's the name of God's Son, Savior and Lord, who loves you. And someone, you might be thinking this morning, Gary, how can you say that God loves me? You don't know my situation. The Bible says, friend, that he loves you. As our reading said, for God so loved the world. Now the world here is you. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, this Jesus loves you, friend. He loves you so much that he bled and died for you. And just as Jesus isn't a swear word, neither is hell a swear word. Jesus is a real person, person, just as hell is a real place. Hell is not a state of mind. You hear many people saying, I'm going through hell at the moment. But hell is not a state of mind. It's a real place and real people will be there. This modern world, people have an unwarranted notion that everyone is going to heaven. And I've encountered this many a time when visiting a family who's just had a loved one passing. They'll say they've no interest in God, no church connection, none whatsoever, but they think their loved one will be in heaven. The modern world tells us that we can live whatever way we want and we'll all go to heaven. Friend, that's a lie. Just as heaven is a place, hell is a place. 
And the Bible teaches us about heaven and hell. But friends, every man, every woman listening, we can all get to heaven by believing in this man, Jesus Christ. And more than anything, I hope and pray that every one of us will be in heaven with our Savior. That's the gospel. And the word gospel means good news. Friends, we have good news. Hands up who believes that we have good news. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have to be lost. We can be forever in heaven. Friends, that is good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Martin Luther said that this is the gospel in a nutshell. The good news of the gospel in 26 words. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, let's take that part out and put our own names in it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that if Gary McCleary believes in him, he shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Put your own name in that scripture. Hallelujah. Wonderful. I think that's the best news we'll ever hear. Friends, if you haven't already done so, transfer your trust to this Jesus. Don't trust in this world and the, the lies that it's telling you. Trust in this Jesus Christ. And the results will be life-changing. And as I close, friends, Calvin Coolidge was the 30th president of the United States. And he served in office from 1923 to 1929. And one day, they were involved in a heated discussion. And one of the senators had enough. And in disgust, he said to one of his opponents, go to hell. The person that he said this to was enraged. And he said to the president, did you hear what he just said to me? He told me to go to hell. What are you going to do about it? And the president took a pause and he said this I checked the book and he does have the right to tell you to go to hell but he continued you don't have to go you don't have to go friends this book the Bible tells us we have good news and that we don't have to go. If you repent of your sins and believe in this Jesus Christ, then friends, we're all going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Friends, can I thank you again for being with us this morning and thanks to all those tuning online. It's been great to have you and we trust and pray that the Lord has spoken to you all this morning. And now we'll close our service by singing number 285, I Love the Name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord, in my life.
the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, friends, we'll close with a benediction. And as we go this day, Lord, we thank you for your life-changing message this morning. And help us to know, Lord, that because of your love you have for each one of us, that you sent your Son for me. And may we all be focused on the Savior and never forget the sacrifice that Jesus has made for each one of us. And with your Spirit, Lord, direct us in your path. And may we go in peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you throughout this day and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.